Okay, so here we are for round three. This is the final round for our Wizarding Wars event number one. And in the finals, we are going to have Andrew Blank versus Pat Eschke. So I might have butchered that last name, Pat. I'm sorry. Don't worry, I won't give it another shot. Let's go ahead and uh, jump into the game here. And it is going to be that McGonagall deck that we saw earlier. Plus an Angelina Johnson deck that's been coming up uh, the tables here. Both of these players are 2-0. And this deck is, I believe, the only one that we haven't really seen get played yet tonight. Although we did catch a glimpse at the end of round two. Um, and we are going to see a standard start for Quidditch decks here. Especially Angelina Johnson. Where we're going to go ahead and just slam three month long match down. Because we assume our opponent isn't going to solve it before we have a chance to either solve it or interact with it. And of course Angelina Johnson is going to get an extra action every turn as long as there is a match in play. So already we can tell why this deck is 2-0. Because we haven't seen a lot of people using anything to give themselves extra actions. Outside of the Sickles getting played in that one deck that we saw round one. And um, that's really, I mean, it's good for late game. But it's not very efficient and it's not good for like every turn. Meanwhile, Angelina Johnson here, we're already at three actions on turn two, and the amount of actions that we're going to gain over our opponent here is going to just create a really, really huge advantage. And if we play our cards right, pun intended, that extra action every turn is absolutely going to help us steamroll our opponent, but it looks like um, we are going to go ahead and make that not as bad for our opponent as it could be, as we just used our extra action to just draw a card. So yeah, we did invest two actions last turn into drawing cards, that's unfortunate. Picking on Neville is going to successfully get rid of our match, and there goes our extra action. Man, I would have loved to have seen... The nice thing about three actions is you can play a character card or an adventure card and still have an action left to invest in, like a lesson or something, so you don't fall behind. I would have really liked to see um, a character come down, like a Seamus, to help push this action advantage. Uh, even something like Concrevy to help give us cards. Peeves to help refill our hand, give us cards, and also deal damage to our opponent faster. Um... All this stuff would be really, really nice to see, to take advantage of this extra action we're getting from Angelina. So we did get another match down the next turn. Um, we used Lesson and Match as our two actions, but there it is, another picking on Neville. And those picking on Nevels are really going to be dismantling us here if we're not using those extra actions that we get from the three-month long, three month long match. Although we didn't even get a chance to get an extra action off that one since it was removed before we started our turn. So there we go. We're going to just slam yet another three month long match into play. Um, now that's two picking on Neville's down. It's going to be a little bit of time before Andrew can get. Oh my goodness, guys. I have the names wrong. Let me go ahead and change those real fast. Oh, I was on a roll, guys. It's okay. Hey, like we said, we're uh, knocking the rust off this week as we kind of figure out what we're doing. So I did announce their names, though. This is going to be Andrew Blank versus Pat. There it is. It's all good now. No worries. Fixed. Okay, what did I miss? I just missed. It looks like we <laughs> had yet another picking on Neville. We used picking on Neville number three on another three-month-long match. I guess fair is fair. You have three matches. I've got three Neville's. Um, and we put down another lesson. So now we're at five. Things are about to get out of hand. If Andrew can get to seven and get to those scribble fours, I think that uh, Pat can say goodbye to everything on his side of the table. I'd love to see just a little bit more come out of the Angelina action advantage. Although I do love that we see two different decks doing the uh, 30 month long, or sorry, month long match. 30 month long match. Oh my god. It's 30 days long, right? Month long match with Swallowing the Snitch. Very, very cool combo. Pep Talk coming down. Man, Quidditch decks love the Pep Talk. And maybe it's just the theming, huh? So of course Pep Talk is going to say that your opponent... Uh, has to use the first action on each of their turns to draw a card, and that they're going to show you a card from their hand with the printed power of eight or more to solve it, which a lot of decks just don't have. So a lot of decks can run into a lot of trouble when they're trying to solve this naturally. Um, fortunately for those decks, and fortunately for Andrew here, picking on Neville, Dobby, Scribble Fours, all that stuff is going to work 
just fine against Pep Talk. Of course, he does have to get to seven lessons before Scribble is used, and he did already use three Nevels, but there's one Neville and a Dobby left in the deck, and he is drawing two cards a turn thanks to that Pep Talk, so we'll see. The reason Quidditch decks like the Pep Talk is because Quidditch decks love... Oh my goodness, I got loud and uh, going quick. Dragonflight just kicks on real fast. Let's listen to Harry Potter music and things just got out of control. All right, let's, let's roll that back. All right. Um, the reason that Quidditch decks like Pep Talk is because Fouled is an incredible combo with Pep Talk. Pep Talk puts them at um, using their first action to draw a card and Fouled takes away one of their actions. So they only get one action and they must use it to draw a card, essentially skipping their turn. Muddy Practice is going to be yet another match out here. Of course, the Angelina deck is loaded with matches because they need to have one in play to take advantage of that extra action. Um, I think it's pretty funny that the Angelina deck is like holding matches in your hand is bad because they don't do anything for you. You can't have more than one in play. So the Angelina deck is actually getting more action out of the cards in their hand because their matches are getting removed. It just makes you wish that you had assumed your matches were going to get removed, invested in the bad ones up front, muddy practice or whatever, because your opponent is still incentivized to use that same removal on the bad matches because the matches are what's giving Angelina the extra action and the extra action is what's backbreaking here. So using picking on Neville on Muddy Practice feels pretty bad, but you're still going to watch them do it because they want to get rid of your match so that Angelina isn't as effective. If you played out these Muddy Practices and have them removed and then bam, 30 month long match, 30 day long, god damn, I'm going to keep doing that. 30 day long match comes down and uh oh, they've used three of their picking on Neville's. Instead, you went through the good action or the good matches. Now we're down to Muddy Practice. I mean, of course, we might have just drawn them in that order, but I'm just saying if you're given that choice, I can see a lot of players choosing to maybe play the the bigger payoff. One, the, you know, three month long match is really the one. Oh, just three month long. It's not 30 day long and it's not month long match. Okay, that's where I'm getting my three or my 30 type thing from. Three month long match. It's a long match, okay? Very long. Uh, put outer is going to come down here. Ooh, this isn't a, a card that I see too often. So you may use two actions to choose one of your opponent's cards in play and return it to his or her hand. Um, the only reason that this isn't an absolutely disgusting use of two actions is because we're getting an extra action every turn, so we could still do something other than that, but using two actions to undo one of your opponent's actions is rarely strong, and they don't have any characters or adventures in play that we're using this on, so it's not going to get, uh, you know, equity on that two for two. But it looks like they're just going to use Bundaman Ooze on us, and so, yeah, go ahead, get rid of Put Outer. Man, Muddy Practice is not a card that you ever want to use, honestly, right? Skipping 5 actions to deal 10 damage is a really, really bad damage for action cost. I'm not into that ratio. What are we going to do, Pat? We've got the lessons down. Our opponent isn't doing anything to us. There we go. I was going to say, I want to start seeing some Fouls. I want to start seeing some Dodging the Bludger. Uh, so, of course, Fouled is going to come down here. It's going to deal four damage to the opponent. And we are going to make them take one less action next turn. Looks like Black Bat, Aragog's Lair, Potions, and Care Magical Creature. So there is an Aragog's Lair in there. We just... Uh, we missed it last time, so we're going to just adjust my size here. Zigzag coming out. Zigzag is another good one. Zigzag just puts a non-healing Quidditch card from your discard pile into your hand. So you just put Fouled back in your hand. I wouldn't be surprised to see Fouled or um, three-month-long match come back. I didn't get to see what it was. But yeah, Zigzag goes down. Uh, three three month long matches are in here and one fouled. So I'm actually, I, mean, I was going to say, if I only see two of these or no fouls, I know which one it was, but I'm actually not sure. It might have been the foul, but I'm not 100%. Looks like we're going to Dobby Muddy's practice. That's great. That's great. This is exactly what we were talking about before. Dobby's disappearance is down to a one of, and our opponent just used Dobby's disappearance to get rid of the bad match. 
that's fine by us. I mean, we're going to get one less action next turn, but we really want to play a non-muddy practice match if we can. Now that we've seen a lot of those go down. Oh my god, we just paid eight for Forest Spider. Hey, you know what? We've got eight lessons, so it's not like it, uh, you know, it didn't hurt us that much. It's just, hey, whatever. It's a neutral play, 3-3. Three, three. It's going to be coming in. Paying an honest cost for Forest Spider is not what you're thinking of when you put this list together. Doesn't mean it's the wrong thing to do here, though. Three damage is going to add up a lot very quickly. I mean, you figure it's 5% of your deck every time it hits you. Muddy practice gets us the we're just out of all the good matches. You know, we have three three month long matches in the discard pile. We're really just desperate to get that um that extra action. Haggard needs help going to discard is tough. Haggard needs help is a phenomenal adventure. Oh, we're just going to go ahead and run out another forest spider here. Quidditch does actually have decent removal because Quidditch has a lot of removal for, like, permanence. But a lot of it is opponent chooses. So your opponent's going to choose to sacrifice the lessons, the extra lessons they have first. Um, I don't know what the cheapest Quidditch card is to deal three damage to a creature. I don't think it's this one. The new Slytherin Seeker is deal five damage to an opponent uh if there's a match in play you may have the opponent choose one of their creatures and play and discard oh that's actually pretty good here new slytherin seeker so new slytherin seeker is another one of the air slytherin cards um it's going to deal damage and we're getting the payoff for our opponent playing creatures is like the bonus on that so we are going to deal them a bunch of damage and remove one of those spiders that's a great two for one on that card that's certainly worth the six lessons we had to have in play to play it and it looks like uh, it's going to be that and fouled. So we took the four damage, then passed. Andrew took or dealt three damage with the forest spider. Has one action has to spend it wisely here. You honestly just want to run out more creatures. You know, whatever the best creature you have in your hand is, especially if it's like black bats, just start slamming that stuff out because you really need to catch up here. You're sitting at seven cards less than your opponent, and that's not good. And you're trying to win on uh, just aggro damage. Not really a secondary wink on here, although I think Andrew might be the one who we saw running grip. No, no, that wasn't him. That was in the game against Stefan. We watched Andrew round one against Morello. That's right. Excuse me as I just crash into my microphone here. Headbutting my microphone. All right, so muddy practice. It looks like, oh no. Well, family, we uh, we have decided to just start putting uh, actions into Muddy Practice. So we used an action to discard a card from our hand. It looks like that's what uh, Andrew did. Andrew used an action to discard Raven to Writing Desk and put one on Muddy Practice. He's uh, looking to deal that 10 damage. Picking on Neville is going to come down and choose the Forest Spider. Looks like we're losing two lessons. Sure enough, now it's time for another picking on Neville. <laughs> Scribble fours would be really, really nice if we had seven lessons, but we're missing one more. But yeah, it is another picking on Neville. So yeah, there it is. It's going to be two more lessons or the forest spider. And hint, hint, guys, it's the forest spider. Oh, man, we just walked back four actions. Because, yeah, now... Oh, no, Vanishing Step. Okay, I was going to say, because now they're going to use removal on the spider, and God, that's going to feel bad. But no, it's going to be... Uh... 
Vanishing Step is going to be action number three for us. Remember that bonus action from Angelina. And Vanishing Step's going to say you get one less action, so we're really, really just leaning into that action advantage that we're generating over them with Angelina now. It's three actions to their one. So far, it's been enough, especially deleting five of the... Or sorry, four of his actions like that. Oh, man. You should have just dropped the spider because you have, you know, then all the cards in your deck are still playable. But instead, you try and save the spider. And you know they're going to have a follow-up. You know they're going to have a follow-up. And then they make you save the spider again. Now you can't play any of the cards in your hand. You know, you're down to one-third of your deck and you're thinking about building your mana base again, you're in trouble. You need to have a game plan to get to the end here. And at this point, it's pretty much uh, put every single egg in the forest spider basket. But here's another picking on Neville. And we're going to get rid of two more lessons. That's it. We just, we have put every single egg in the forest spider basket. If anything happens to this forest spider, we lose. And uh, our opponent could just be playing Drawing the Sword. Because Angelina Johnson is, of course, a Gryffindor Witch. And that's a six-cost damage spell. And we just... Oh, goodness. Three health is what this Forest Spider has. Our opponent's at 20 damage. So that's going to be seven... You know, well, not really. Because they're going to draw a card every turn. So it's going to be... Do, 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 cringe number six. It's going to be five. Five more hits of this is going to get us a game anyway. But... Um, it's a big ask. It's a big ask. Our opponent has to basically, what, just do nothing, slam their head against the wall for that to actually be how we win. Um, we can do nothing to prevent them from whatever they want to do now that we're down to one lesson. I mean, we just have a bunch of cards in our hand that are just there to exist. Oh, no. See? And that's it right there. New Slytherin Seeker. So guess what? Sacrifice one of your creatures. This wouldn't even do anything if you had just lost the creature earlier. You got rid of six lessons. It's just it's so hard to walk or uh, to come back from that. To walk back from that, I was going to say. It's tough. It's tough. You know, um, that's exactly the thing you have to look at when you're looking at a card like Picking on Neville. Picking on Neville is making your opponent make a choice, and no matter what, the choice is going to be bad for them. And the thing is, you have all the information, you know, and they're giving you so much more. Like, what they choose gives you information whether or not they sacrifice cards to keep the thing gives you information and you can put them in this position where that was just a sunk cost fallacy situation right where we're like well i've already discarded two cards to save this guy i have to keep going no no no. the second one comes down you know you just kind of swallow your pride learn from your mistake and you get rid of the spider um instead we lost every lesson we had and the spider anyway and now there's pretty much no way for us to actually deal even though our opponent is pretty close to us in damage and they're not doing that much to actually deal us damage there's not really anything we can do to win i mean we played it through the arch to try and slow them down but if we just drew past for the rest of the game we wouldn't win so we need to do something we can't just play not to lose but it's really hard to do with one transfiguration and one potions lesson we don't even have any creatures lessons down um I mean, we're looking at, like, Bun Me and Ooze is, like, the one thing we can do to deal damage with what we've got out, and that's only going to deal one. And not even right, because it's a three cost, so we need another lesson. And spending actions on lessons, which is just actions you're investing so that you can spend actions on real things later, something you can't do when you're down to ten hit points, you know? That's a tough one. Now it looks like we are going to call that one. So of course I think Axe Hurdle conceding there, realizing yeah, I just don't have anything left. And we go to game two, but that's a uh, game one and one more game. And Pat is going to take the first tournament here, so it's going to be up to Andrew to side in a couple cards. Maybe you can help him ramp a little faster. Maybe some stuff to deal with some of the removal. And, you know, not for nothing, hopefully we learn something about the protecting the one spider. You know, it's only just going to take us a decent draw and one action to play another spider to the field. But once we lose the lessons, we just, we've lost two actions, then we lose another two actions. It's almost always wrong to 
sacrifice two cards to prevent Neville from happening, you should just take it. Right? Just be like, okay, you got me. Neville is used to remove this card. Yeah, thumbs up. But if you just think of, instead of thinking of cards like, oh, well, am I really using this lesson right now? Think of every card as an action and think like, okay, should I lose one action or should I lose two actions? Well, that's a pretty obvious choice, right? Obviously, there's a lot more to it than that. It gets deeper than that. But um, on the surface, for the most part, especially when you're just choosing between lessons and like a creature without an enter the battlefield effect, they're essentially the same thing, right? They're just like blocks of entropy, as it were. <laughs> Alright, so these guys have done their sideboarding. They have determined who's going first. We are now resolving our mulligans. And then we will begin... Game 2. In the final match here. Is it going to be a McGonagall creature deck, or is it going to be an Angelina Johnson Quidditch match deck? I think seeing Quidditch take week one will be pretty cool, because Quidditch is a type that doesn't get too much attention. Some of the cards are overall weaker than a lot of their counterparts and other types. It's mostly because I think they added Quidditch to the game, and it's really difficult to add an element to the game and balance it, so I think they were a little bit afraid of making it too strong, especially because... Quidditch interacts with permanents on the board a lot. It's like chip damage and they remove a guy, chip damage and they remove a guy. Um, they made sure that the opponent always gets to choose, which really mitigates a lot of the strength of those kinds of effects. But they did give them a lot of them. And some of those more cheeky kinds of like things like fouled. All right. So here we are. We're going to go ahead and play Baby Acromantula into Baby Acromantula. This is pretty much the... Uh, the dream turn one and turn two here for Andrew. We only got to see this in round one, so he's going to go play McGonagall Lesson. Lesson is round one. Then turn two, Acromantula Search, Acromantula Search. The other one's in the hand. And now, boom, we're going to start accruing that value. Starting immediately, our opponent plays just a couple of lessons here. And we are going to go ahead and deal two damage. And slam down through the arch. Now, through the arch is a little bit early. Maybe not. I guess four is where Quidditch starts to cast some spells. I guess we don't want them to do um, fouls. So they're, of course, just going to skip two actions into this. That's the right play, 100%. Um, what you'd really like to do is play a match, because then you can put three into this, or you can skip this and have two more actions at the end. Like next turn, if we played a match and used an action to skip, we're in a really good position. So, of course, Baby Acromantula is doing what Baby Acromantulas do. Achievement unlocked. All four Baby Acromantulas are on the field at the same time. And uh, it, what's really funny is there's only three on this card. I guess you see the fourth one in the background, but that's obviously not a baby, right? The, it's like Ariog's legs. Uh, Flavor-wise, because you could run four copies of a card in the deck, I would have just really, really liked to see four Acromantulas on this card. But of course, here are four Acromantulas. We see them all on the table together. And this is, uh, you know, Ron saying, why does it have to be spiders? These guys are absolutely ready to, to uh, pounce because, you know, they don't get fresh food that often. And Angelina Johnson is uh, floating just above the forest on her Quidditch broom, trying her best not to get eaten by these spiders. But they are nipping at her toes. Picking on Neville again, guys. Uh, we talked about this earlier. I really don't like that. You have your opponent skipping actions behind through the arch. Do you really need to picking on Neville their lessons? No, because what's going to happen is they're going to skip another action for through the arch. Then they're going to play some match or something like that. And you want to use these picking on Neville's to remove the matches because they're skipping an action essentially, right? Quote, unquote by playing a match that they don't want to actually solve yet, especially like Muddy Practice. Muddy Practice is like a throwaway, right? You're playing it just to get the extra action. So you play Muddy Practice. You've invested one action to get a lot more later, but if they use removal on your Muddy Practice, it's like you didn't do anything to progress your game at all. And because the Acromantulas are passively progressing Andrew's game every turn, those trades are way better for Andrew. So Andrew doesn't want to use picking on Neville on the lessons. He could care less about these lessons. He wants to use it on some of the more powerful things that are coming down. So it looks like uh, he did get rid of that Transfiguration. Pesh is like, whatever, skips the last through the arch, plays a Transfiguration lesson, and uh, goes it 
passes the turn. So those Acromantulas are going to come in and deal five, sorry, four damage there. If you're Pat, you got to be feeling pretty good that uh, Andrew is so far away from being able to play Aragog. And it looks like that's not a sideboard. It looks like we might be main deck in Chamber of Secrets. Uh, oh, no, we did already side ones, right? So Chamber of Secrets is going to come down and say, hey, you can't go ahead and cycle things out of your discard pile. Um, and it bounces at any other location. Now, Angelina Johnson, this deck, I don't think, is really going into the discard pile as often as Stefan's deck was. Uh, Raven to Writing Desk is going to come down and just say, hey, one of these guys has got to go. And there it is. Now there truly are only two Acromantulas on the field. Oh, wait, what happened? I thought it's uh, they choose one. Oh, we played two Raving to Writing Desks, huh? Wow. Yeah, I'll do her. So through the arch coming down again saying, oh, God damn it. I gave you one turn. I gave you one turn where I didn't play through the arch. I played Chamber of Secrets instead. And then you used two different things on me, and that's very smart of Pat using that turn when he has a chance to start slamming those spells out, get rid of some of those spiders. Going to go ahead and invest two more actions into skipping through the arch, and Pat, I like this play. Pat knows what he's got to do. He just has to, you got to look the problem square in the eye and just deal with it. You can't pretend through the arch isn't there. You don't want to complain about it being there or what it's doing to you. Just look it right in the eye and just deal with it. So there we are. We're sticking two actions into it. Giant Tarantula is coming down, and we're going to go ahead and get rid of one of our lessons again. Black Bat came in and did two damage immediately, and again, this is starting to be a scary looking board. We're going to finish solving through the arch, and. Boy, there's gonna be a lot of free damage coming from monsters. It's time to do something about these monsters. Creatures, sorry. Giant Tarantula is one of the best creatures in the game. Um, it doesn't seem like it at first, but it really, really is. Getting it out a creature on turn one that can deal two damage a turn is pretty strong. It's a lot stronger than it seems, especially because to get two damage a turn, you usually have to get further up there. You got to get to cards that cost at least three or so. Um, Black Bat is one of the ones that like, costs four. I mean, sure, it does damage when it comes in, but that's a two one just like Tarantula. It costs four. Of course, the whole thing with Tarantulas is it basically costs two actions and in a very specific way. But if there was a character that cost two actions and just sat there and did two damage every turn, I mean, hey, I'd probably be playing that character too. And yeah, the fact that the Tarantula checks all the spider boxes is probably what got it into the deck. And yeah, it does link up with all of those synergies. But in Classic, that creature, because of how low the curve can be for a creature's deck, um, you don't even go up to Black Bat. You know what I'm saying? In Classic, you just hang out with four of the three-cost Gargoyle and four of the Tarantula, and then you're using utility creatures and damage spells and steel claws, and, you know, the rest of your deck is just hashtag good cards. And that's really all you need. Maybe, like, one Marble Gargoyle. I'm not kidding. Like, like one, two, maybe. You're really not going up to five lessons, though. You don't want to, at least. Um, so here it is, the Angelina with that perfect opener. It's going to be lesson and three-month-long match. Getting that match down really, really early is great because it's saying, hey, I'm going to go ahead and start generating this action advantage. Now we really want to see Angelina take advantage of the action advantage that she's creating this round, unlike last game, where Andrew was able to eke out some of the uh, better plays despite us having more actions than he did. And never mind, we took advantage of it right away as we just <laughs> absolutely vomited lessons onto the table. But we are getting our Acromantula chain. So, hey, you know what? This is yet another series tonight where game three, both players got their good start. They got what they were looking for. They have their early game on lock. Exactly the way it looked on paper. Exactly the way they drew it up in practice. What they wanted to see coming true before their very eyes. Angelina 
Really looking for a way to get some card advantage though, as action advantage isn't just, you know, all you need. And we are turning actions into cards when, you know, I've seen worse things. And there is Zigzag. That's going to go ahead and put a card back in our hand. Oh no, Zigzag is the damage that we took from the baby Ekromitula, sorry. Good, I was going to say, we don't even have any other <laughs> cards to get with Zigzag in the discard pile. Uh, so it looks like, yeah, three-month-long match. Hey, the Acromantulas are actually putting counters on this. So you're going to want to do something about this match before you let them just solve it. Angelina ramping, ramping, ramping on those lessons, though. I'd really like to see what the top-end payoff is for all these lessons besides Scribble Fours. But I think that might just be it. Um, we're kind of just waiting to deal like medium amounts of damage. So yeah, again, on this turn, it's going to be Acromantula two and three searching for three and four. So three of them on the field, number four in the hand will be coming out to play next turn with all of its brothers and sisters. And then hopefully we get to see Aragog's lair. I mean, that uh, location is one of the new revival cards and it's just been either in hand or going to discard. We haven't really got to see these, Spiders get uh, extra health and again new Slytherin Seeker just this efficient revival card coming in It's going to deal five damage to an opponent and because there is a match in play It's going to force them to sacrifice one of their creatures as well It is only going to be a baby Acromantula, but still it's just that overtime advantage that Andrew's hoping to gain Meanwhile, he's five cards down despite being the one with creatures out and Miss Brood Polyjuice very very cool Revival card that we see here in the discard again. Sorry guys and untap they like put every card sideways So I know it's a little bit difficult to see some of these I'm working on a solution for that for the future here But uh, Miss Brood Polyjuice is going to count the number of creatures in your uh, that your opponent has in play and In the discard pile and you deal that much damage to your opponent And then they choose one of their characters in play other than their starting character and it uh, Loses all abilities. Or, sorry. You choose one and it loses all abilities. This is supposed to punish heavy character decks. Through the arch. We skipped three actions into this bad boy. And through the arch being very effective, and it looks like a uh, three month long match might get solved before us. We better swallow the snitch on that one, but it's going to be hard to swallow the snitch. When we're spending actions and drawing cards instead of investing into cards on our board that can draw cards for us. Um, drawing the sword, there it is. Drawing the sword is going to be, again, like we mentioned earlier, because he has that Gryffindor starting witch, he's going to be able to deal six damage divided however he chooses among any number of creatures. And that's going to be enough to clean up the spiders and the bats. Halloween is over. Andrew... See you later. You didn't get the memo. It's Quidditch season, baby. Halloween is donezo. It's got to be looking like a pretty strong position here for Pat. Pat using eight actions to skip through through the arches this game and showing that it's like, hey, like I said, you just kind of got to tackle them head on. Meanwhile, Andrew was hoping that the, the arches would buy him a lot more time than they actually did because Pat tackled them head on. And he really wasn't able to set up too much behind them. I mean, he got a couple creatures down, but nothing Pat couldn't undo with a well-placed drawing the sword. And we're starting to see why drawing the sword is uh, one of the cards that the revival team felt was necessary for those transfiguration archetypes. It can be really, really difficult for a deck like Transfiguration Quidditch to deal with a wide board. And drawing the sword is a cool tool because it doesn't stop them from dealing with with a large board of big guys which is what you know if a control deck is able to assemble multiple large bodies on the field that's like their payoff you don't want to have like one card that deals with that that's that accessible right because you want those decks to feel good to play and to win too so what's neat here is it's something that says okay if you you know dedicate the deck building cost to this if you put it in the deck or in your sideboard um, this is a powerful tool that you can have sometimes to get you out of these aggro situations 
And that's exactly what we needed to get out of this aggro situation. And thankfully, that's why we run the card and we drew it. The other nice thing is the combo between cards like, oh, we just missed a new Slytherin Seeker and drawing the sword, right? You can drawing the sword first and clear out all the little guys and then new Slytherin Seeker them and they have to discard cards and then they have to choose a creature and get rid of it so you can split the damage on the sword however you choose. So you can go ahead and get like uh, the one cost, the two cost, the three health guys, and then you can have them sacrifice the largest guy. Pretty cool. It's a combo. Chamber of Secrets is going to come down again. And now, I mean, we do see every once in a while, like the zigzag comes into play and these guys are going into their discard pile to get cards, but it's not like we're seeing Pomfrey, Severus Snape, or Hannah Abbott. So even Reparo is not being played in that one deck. So I don't really know how relevant Chamber of Secrets is going to be here. It's not replacing a location for our opponent. Um, we just need a little bit more proactive action. Chamber of Secrets isn't it. Losing all of our, all four of our spiders hurts because we're going to have to pay, you know, the honest ransom price for the giant spider since we don't have that many spiders out. And we just don't have the lessons to pay for something like that, right? We're up to five lessons. We got to get up to eight if we wanted to start running out those spiders. And that's like, if you figure you have four baby acromantulas, Four, four, I mean, I'm just going to say four for everything, right? Four, four spiders, four giant tarantulas, four baby acromantulas, and, well, not four Aragog, but right? Let's just say you have four, four, four of your spider guys. Well, boom, one, two, three, four baby acromantulas are in here. Already one giant tarantula, and um, that means that you've got, you know, three giant tarantulas left, which are going to discard a lesson when you play them. And you have four eight-cost spiders left who, if you play, even if you played all of the, the spiders that get rid of the lessons, they don't really discount the things at all because they're tossing lessons away. So they're actually just keeping it just as hard for you to pay for the big spider. Um, so you're kind of locked out of all the big spiders at this point. Like, you just have to kind of bank on Black Bat, Black Bat, uh, Slam Down 2, Baby Tarantulas, Go. Because Aragog and the eight cost uh, spiders, they're not happening in this game. Quidditch is about to get us into a really nasty position where they're going to be comboing Fouled and Adventures, or Fouled and Pep Talk. And slowly, 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 Andrew's uh, just going to feel this game slip away from him. Especially because this is now how many turns in? Um. Well, these guys aren't passing the turn, but it's a lot, right? Let's, you know, it's got to be plus 10 turns at least for each player. So 10 plus free actions. Gosh, how do you not win with 10 plus free actions? I mean, it's killing Andrew. The Pat is just sitting here milking value out of this Angelina. Thank goodness for Andrew. Pat isn't actually doing a whole lot to convert that value into a board position or into something to use to win. Um, looks like we're going to get Vanishing Step and we're going to play that to make our opponent have one less action next turn. God forbid if uh, if Andrew just drops like a grip hook right here and wins the game, huh? And it looks like the other tables are reporting. So we have final results for table two. Stefan lost to Nicola, so uh, the Quidditch decks both at different ends of the tables tonight. But they're here to play, man. You know, they're they're real decks. They have legs for sure. And it was two one, so Stefan put up a fight.
And these have been some exciting games tonight. <clears throat> we got to see a bunch of different types of decks. I like that most of the decks didn't have the same win con. Even the two Quidditch decks are quite different, and they're definitely using different starting characters. Um, a couple things to note. We did see a lot of the specific Air of Slytherin cards that are meant to do certain things. So, like, drawing the sword is meant to give Transfiguration a way to deal with creatures besides bouncing them, right? Um, we see that... Of course, Chamber of Secrets is here doing exactly what it's supposed to do, preventing cards from being recycled, zigzag, stopping that from getting those fouls back from the discard pile. We see Baby Acromantulas doing what they do, swarming the board, and we see Forest Spider getting reduced by cost of seeing a couple of those come into play. We're also seeing the drawbacks of those kinds of cards, seeing how the Acromantulas kind of go all in up front, and then uh, you, know, you either keep them and plus off the spider synergies, or if you lose all those spiders, especially without something like Aragog's Lair in play, which really would have gone a long way towards helping that sword be way less strong. Um, how you can lose the spiders, and then you just don't have as many of them available to reduce costs and things and take advantage of those synergies later. Speaking of, here's another honest, <laughs> honest to goodness, eight drop forest spider paid for for eight. This is exactly the kind of thing that we have to worry about, though, if we're Pat, because Pat is just going to be giving up even more of this three month long match. As soon as he loses this, he loses the game. Dobby's is coming down. We're going to Dobby's disappearance, the Chamber of Secrets. Oh my goodness, look at this. So, so this is showing how effective Chamber of Secrets was being. We actually are going to be Dobbying the Chamber to play Zigzag. Zigzag is going to get us Catch the Snitch, and we're going to play Catch the Snitch to win the current match. That's going to, so, so we're showing our opponent again, like this is my chain I'm doing here. So Dobby's disappearance gets rid of the, that, right? Gets rid of the uh, chamber. Gets us <clears throat> zigzag. We play zigzag and it puts catch the snitch into our hand. We play catch the snitch to win the current match and we're going to play new Slytherin Seeker. So this is going to deal 15 and then new Slytherin Seeker is going to deal another 5 and make him get rid of a creature. So that's gonna be 20 damage. Right, did we not play, or did we just put it back in hand and we didn't play it? Sorry. Don't we have the extra action from Angelina though? Oh no, did we foul that turn? I'm missing what why we didn't have the actions to do it. Did we play both zigzags? That might've been what happened. I, it looks like we actually dobbied and played two zigzags. And then the, uh, New Slytherin Seeker. So we dobbied, we zigzagged for win the match, we zigzagged for Slytherin Seeker, we played Slytherin Seeker. Now all we have to do is play uh, Catch the Snitch, and that's actually going to be it here. Unless Andrew has something. Uh, oh, he has Dobby for the, the match, but it doesn't matter because it puts it back in the hand. Dobby showing why it's not very strong against things exactly in that situation. Dobby is better at walking back actions. He doesn't actually prevent something from you know, winning the game essentially. So uh, now, you know, we're gonna go to Pat's turn. Pat's gonna play three month long match. He's gonna play catching the snitch, solve the match, win it, deal 15 damage. And then when Andrew draws card for turn, that's gonna be game. So it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be Pat taking it with an Angelina Johnson Quidditch deck this week. Pretty cool stuff. Picking on Neville is actually going to go ahead and give it one of the lessons. That's pretty big. Never mind. I take it back. It looks like he's bought himself another turn. And, uh, and <laughs> now I have to flip-flop what I was just saying. And as I talk about how Pat is actually dangerously low on cards left in deck. Uh, new Slytherin Seeker, though. Another new Slytherin Seeker in hand is going to deal four more damage and get rid of that creature. That's huge. Getting rid of that creature is exactly what we needed to do seven is feeling plenty safe now and again guys again i mean i'm gonna sound like a broken record but hey if we were playing peeves in our deck seven wouldn't be that safe would it it'd actually be pretty terrifying it's like a, that's a kill zone where i'm from but i think uh I think that we've bought ourselves the time. I mean, with how many cards Pat has in his hand? What's this? This is like three, six, nine, fifteen. He's got twenty cards in his hand. 
he's got a lesson, right? <laughs> it's going to be lesson, catch the snitch. Andrew's just uh, just searching, searching his hand for an answer. Looks like he uses one action to draw a card. Oh, man, that means we're down to one action and a, and a prayer. Because that means we didn't have something worth in our hand. So we used one action to hope that the next card off the top of our deck was going to win us the game. And nope, it's Chamber of Secrets. Not quite enough, just a little bit too late. And there it is, Catch a Snitch. That's the game. Congratulations to Pat Eschke. Pat is going to be the winner this week of our very first event with Quidditch. Quidditch takes it. Something else. It's something else. It's very, very cool. And Angelina Johnson wins the match. Very, very cool. Well, guys, that was it for me. It has been awesome getting to cast some matches of Harry Potter trading card game. Not something that I thought I would get to do. Something that I'm very excited to do. And, man, I can't wait to do some more of these in the future. We're going to be having these tournaments every Tuesday night uh, for a while. I mean, you know, at least as long as, long as people are having fun, I'm willing to do it. Um, you can go ahead and sign up through the Revival Discord. The HarryPotterTCG.com link will bring you to the website where you can see everything you need to know about the revival group and about what they've been working on you can join the discord you can get information on these events you can come play with us you can check out these videos we'll be uploading them we'll probably start streaming these live so that you guys can interact and we can answer questions in chat um, but just for the players to be comfortable with this first one make sure everything went smoothly i just wanted to record them on the side and figured i'd upload them for you guys to enjoy later but that's going to be it for us this week, guys. Uh, you can just keep an eye on the Dark Mark. Check out the darkmarktcg.com or check out the Revival Discord for upcoming events and information. Take care.